In this tutorial, we will review the basic concept that you require in order for you to be successful in lab one, which is basically modeling air resistance. The lab basically consists of coffee filters, a motion sensor, a computer interface, and a computer. Now you're required to determine or to model the drag force experienced by a coffee filter falling through air. Now, in order for us to understand this lab and be able to and be able to be successful in it, let us start first by reviewing some of the concepts that you need. Initially, the coffee filter is at rest. When the coffee filter is allowed to fall, it experiences three forces. You have gravity, which acts vertically downwards. This is mg. It experiences a drag force, F, D, which always acts in the opposite direction in which the object is moving through the fluid. It also experiences a bowian force, also commonly known as the obtrus force. Now, in accordance with Archimedes' principle, the obtrus force or the bowian force acting on an object submerged in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. But because the volume of the coffee filter is very small, we will minimize the obtrus force. So we're going to assume that the obtrus force is zero. So we know that the direction of acceleration is downwards, but we are going to take the upward direction to be positive. So this is the force diagram that illustrates all the forces acting on the coffee filter as it falls. Now we know from Newton's second law that the sum of all the forces acting on the system is equal to the mass of that system times the acceleration of the system. This would mean that F D minus M G will be equal to minus M A. Now we can rewrite this as M G minus F D equal to M A. Now this is the equation of motion of the falling filter. But here's the thing. FD represents the drag force. MG is just gravity. And A represents the acceleration of the coffee filter. Now, experimentally, <coughs> it has been shown that this is really important. Experimentally, it has been shown that the drag force takes the form B V raised to the power N. where B is known as the drag coefficient. N is just a positive exponent. Now it is worthwhile for you to understand that B depends on uh, three factors. The size and shape of the object. It also depends on the nature of the fluid. And lastly, the cross-sectional area
of the object. Now, n, the value of n depends upon the speed of the object. At low speed, n will be equal to 1. This is at low speeds. Now, at high speeds, n will be equal to 2, approximately. Now, the objective, the objective of this lab is to determine experimentally So how are we going to go about doing this? First of all, we have MG minus BVN equal to MA, which basically implies that A is equal to G minus B over M, V raised to the power N. Now observe something. As the object falls, V increases. But G remains the same. What does this mean? This implies that A decreases. <clears throat> Eventually, A becomes zero. And when A becomes zero, this means that G minus B over M, V raised to the power N will be equal to zero. The speed at this particular time, V, is known as the terminal velocity and I'm going to represent this as VT so if we look for the terminal velocity we will have B over M VT N equal to G or VT raised to the power N will be equal to MG divided by B this is a pretty powerful equation because it gives us a way that we can experimentally determine the value for N and for B, provided we are able to measure the terminal velocity of the falling object. Now, if you look back at the experimental setup, when the coffee filter falls, it attains terminal velocity. The motion sensor measures the terminal velocity of the falling coffee filter. So all you need to do is vary the number of coffee filters and simply measure the terminal velocity. When you do that, you will generate a table of values that looks like this. This stands for the number of filters. Stands for the, the terminal velocity. I'm gonna do this V1 V2 
V3, and V average. You know, for 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 a given number of filters, remember you could take you start with one, with two, with three, with four. You measure the terminal velocity three times and you take the average. This is to minimize the random errors that you will make in this particular experiment. So let's take a look at this. We know that Vt raised to the power n Vt raised to the power n is equal to mg divided by b. So if we take the natural log of both sides, it will look like that. So we will have here n ln vd is equal to the natural log of mg minus the natural log of b. This would mean that ln vt is equal to 1 over n, the natural log of mg minus the ln of b divided by n. And if you compare this with an equation of a straight line where y is equal to m x plus c, you will see that y is equal to the natural log of ln vd, x is equal to the natural log of mg, and uh, m is equal to 1 over n. This represents the slope, and uh, therefore, you will have c equal to the natural log of b divided by n, and from which you can determine n and you can determine b. So when you get your table of values, what I expect you to do is to plot a graph of the natural log of Vd versus the natural log of Mg. The graph will look somewhat like this. Now, you will determine the slope of your graph, and that slope will be equal to 1 over n, as well as you will determine the intercept of your graph, the y-intercept, which will be equal to the natural log of b divided by n. From these two, you will be able to determine the value of b and the value of n. Now, the second part of the lab will be for you to derive the mathematical expression for x, v, and acceleration. Now, what I expect of you is the value of n will range between 0 0.75 to 2.45. Now, if your value is between 0 0.75 to 1.49, then n is approximately equal to 1. If your value is from 1.50 to 2.45, then n is approximately equal to 2. Now, depending upon your value for n, you will then substitute that value for n in this expression. So you have a equal to g minus b over m v raised to the power n. So for n equal to 1, this implies that dv over dt 
will be equal to G minus BV over M. For N equal to 2, this implies that DV over DT is equal to G minus BV squared over M. Now, you will be required to solve either 1 or 2, depending upon whether your value is 1, whether, the value, whether your value for n is 1, or your value for n is 2. Now, to do this, you could use, you could separate the variables. So, let's say case 1 in which n is equal to 1, in which case you will have dv over dt equal to g minus, let me do this, um, this will be m over b equal to m g over b minus v another way you could rewrite this is dv bracket m g over b minus v equal to b over m dt you could take the integrals of both sides from 0 to t from 0 to v. This is just going to be equal to negative the natural log of mg divided by bv equal to bt over m which means this is from 0 to v this is from 0 to t so this would mean that the natural log of mg over b minus v minus the natural log of mg over b is going to be equal to negative bt over m. So, the natural log, remember that this right here is just the terminal velocity. So, this would mean that the natural log of Vt minus V divided by Vt is equal to negative bt over m. So, vt minus v is equal to vt e raised to the power bt over m. In other words, v will be vt bracket 1 minus e negative bt over m. Or you could as well say that V is equal to MG divided by B bracket 1 minus E negative BT over M. This is the expression for V. And if you draw the graph of V against time, it's going to be like that where this is VT. So from here, you can differentiate this expression to calculate the acceleration, as well as you can integrate this expression to calculate the displacement. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this little tutorial helped you answer the questions in your lab.